Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here, and today I'm going to be doing a pretty simple hack to a guitar amplifier. This is the AL103 guitar amplifier. It's nothing special, uh, but it gets the job done. It fits inside this cute little um, speaker here, and at least if we're going to believe the writing on the back, it's 15 watts. I don't know if that's true or not, but whatever doesn't really matter that much. I like this one. It's got, you know, decent enough sound for what it is. And if you look inside here, there's not too much going on. You have obviously a DC jack, one fourth inch input. You have uh, an op amp here, which is going to be um, providing your gain. This is your gain knobs. So that's mo more than likely going to be is your uh, your preamp gain stage for your microphone. This more than likely is the not is going to be a five volt step down regulator for this. And then over here is the brains of it all, which is an amplifier. This is a TDA 2030. It's a very old amplifier, but it works on single supply. You'll find it in a lot of budget and old electronics. These were very, very popular, these TDA series of chips. Uh, you'll see they actually have a ribbon connector going towards it going to it, um, which eh, I'm not crazy about that design, but I'm sure it made it easier to assemble. Uh, you'll notice I actually added an extra large bolt capacitor here. With amplifiers, you wanna make sure there's plenty of capacitance on the, uh, the power rails, uh, which is very, very helpful and helps smooth out the signal and keep it so you don't have problems when you hit peaks, um, especially in the lower frequencies. Other than that, not a whole lot going on here. Uh, there's tone control as well, and that might just be doing LPF filter kind of stuff. But anyway, um, what I'm doing today is adding one of these cheapo DC to DC converters because this is designed solely around the TDA2030 chip, which has a single supply operation down to I mean, it'll barely function at 12 volts. So if you look at the back here, it says it wants 14 volts. Well, 14 volt power supplies are not super easy to come by. I didn't get the power supply that came with this originally. I had to build one and it's very inconvenient. What I realized I would really like to do though is actually power this off a large nine volt lithium ion battery that I have, which I'm using to power all my guitar pedals. And I'd like to just power everything off of nine volts since that's what all the guitar pedals use. And so to do that, I need to convert nine volts to 14 volts. Uh, so that's why I got this DC to DC converter board. Now this DC to DC converter board is adjustable with this pot right here, this little uh, knob, this flathead, you turn that and you can adjust the voltage higher or lower. Um, I should say it's always gotta be higher than your input though. This is a step up converter. Now you might think, okay, we'll just turn it to 14 and you're done. We'll actually look at the data sheet and I'm looking at the uh, capacitors in here. They're all rated at 25 V. And the only thing I might have to worry about a little bit is this regulator, but I'm confident that this can take at least 15, 16 volts. And so I'm actually giving it 15 and a half. I've been giving it 15 and a half volts for a while. It's been functioning fine. And you'll notice I put this extra heat sink on here as well. And that's because at higher voltages, you're gonna get more heat dissipation possibly. And you're also going to get uh, better distortion. You're going to get better frequency response and harmonic distortion response because amplifiers are meant to, uh, are rail to rail devices. And they're meant to have as high and low voltages as possible so that the sine wave, the amplitude of the sine wave has enough headroom. The more headroom you have, the less clipping, the less distortion. Um, clipping basically translates to distortion with these amplifiers. So yeah, I like the idea of having the flexibility to give this the voltage that I want. Whenever I use these things, I always make sure to replace the capacitors. The capacitors they come with are super janky. Uh, these are, you know, $3 boards or whatever. A lot of times if you want more current control, you can go with a better uh, diode as well. But I think that one will be good enough for what I'm doing. You know, I'm probably going to get 15 watts or something of output max anyway. And I was lucky that this case would actually take to solder. Sometimes these types of, if these are certain kinds of aluminum and stuff, you can't solder to them. Since I can with this one, you'll see I put two solder blobs in there. And what I'm going to be doing is grounding the uh, the chip there and also the, the negative input. And that's going to work as a heat sink. It's going to make this whole thing a heat sink, not just for the amplifier, but also for this board. It might be overkill, but I'm, I don't think so because um, these boards 
uh, really, really have overheating problems uh, because there's just not much to go on. There's this ground plane on the back, but these chips are supposed to be heat synced. So I imagine a lot of these die because people don't put heat sinks on them. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to put some fuses. I'm going to make sure this still is an input negative so I can use uh, guitar pedal inputs. And I'm going to just be able to power this whole thing off a 9-volt guitar pedal. Um, you know, it's a custom battery. You can't just power it off a 9-volt battery. It's not going to work very long if you do that. But I will be able to, to power it off uh, my custom 9-volt that I'm using for all my guitar pedals. And I'll show that setup in a later video when it's all done. That's it for this video. Have fun hacking your guitar pedals. I don't care if you subscribe, I don't care if you like, just uh, enjoy hacking things. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.